This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building an online presence with little to no experience required. Hey guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at some RPG mods, which are available for Forge on Minecraft 1.18.1. I'll be doing this series relatively often with different themes too, as well as for fabric. So keep a lookout for them. If you like a look of any of these mods, then you can find the links in the description below. I'm going to be showcasing mods which I haven't mentioned before in my channel and are in some of CurseForge's deeper pages, so they're relatively unknown. FRV implements lots of changes, like structures, with the first being the campsite. Here you might find hunters who can be traded with for items like food and leather. They even have some voice lines and breathing effects. At the corruption, you'll find a boss surrounded by blocks which look like they're from the Matrix and if you kill it, you'll receive the likes of netherite ingots and a totem of undying. There's also a pirate ship, which is filled with different types of pirates who also have voice lines. And there's the pirate captain boss. These mostly drop ales, flintlock pistols, and flintlock bullets, which is also a functional gun you can use. Head inside the ship to find lots of loot. Six new sets of armor and tools can be crafted, which are made from copper, tin, quartz, lead, silver, and amethyst. Another creature you can trade with is the Croaker, who sells items like enchantments. With Elytra bombing, you can ignite and drop TNT while flying. All you need to do is have TNT inside your inventory, as well as a flint and steel, or fire charge. When you right-click the igniting item, the TNT will drop, and you can configure the infusion time and cooldown time. It's going to be fun taking out hostile locations or enemy bases. Elemental Power adds equipment that is made from the four elements, which are the air, water, fire, and earth. They can all be crafted from upgrading diamond items and offer better stats too. Depending on the armor you're wearing, you can activate effects like fire resistance, jump boost, and absorption. The weapons that are included are swords, axes, and hammers, and the hammer will deal the most damage of the three. They have some different abilities too. Fire weapons will set enemies on fire, Water will give the dolphins grace effect, earth will give strength 3, and air will give speed 3. When killing zombies, they drop rotten flesh. When the rotten flesh despawns, it will now corrupt the land below it, adding a dark energy to your world. Lots of blocks can become corrupted, like cobblestone, sand, dirt, gravel, and even obsidian. Over time, the corrupted blocks will spread to other nearby healthy blocks, so you need to keep removing them. If a player or animal walks on these blocks, then they'll take damage, whereas hostile mobs will be healed instead. The mod also includes a craftable purifier which reverts blocks. Ability Rings adds new craftable rings which give buffs like flight, swiftness, saturation, healing, and resistance. Most of these rings will work when they're just sitting in your inventory or hotbar but the Ring of Flight requires feathers as a fuel source, with it consuming one feather every three seconds. This mod is quite interesting, and it causes you to spawn in a custom map. You'll find most things you need, like all the different tree types, as well as villages to trade with. There's also some buildings to explore, and it's nicely designed overall. I'd say this mod is designed to be used with friends for a more relaxing playthrough. Using the mining command, you'll teleport to the mines, which has a base where you can sleep and store items before you go caving. Likewise, there is a command to take you to the fishing lobby, which features some custom-built structures. If you want to just play in a vanilla world, then you can still use the spawn command and return to the pre-built lobby whenever you'd like. The boom shot is a new weapon which can be crafted from a plank, a stick, three iron blocks, and a tripwire hook. They also use shell shots as ammunition, with eight being crafted from three leather, a gunpowder, and an iron ingot. The boom shot doesn't have much range to it, as it only deals damage when up close, but an interesting mechanic is that firing it will launch you backwards while also dealing a shockwave on impact, so it might be better for escaping dangerous situations. It can also be upgraded inside a smithing table with a netherite ingot, which allows it to deal two shots before needing to reload and it will give you an extra kick mid-air. The Exploration Plus mod currently adds three structures to your world, 
with the first one being the Forgotten Well, which adds a bit more human interaction to your world. The second structure is the Jungle Temple, which looks like a small pyramid and can be found in jungle biomes. You might find a single chest in here, as well as a spider spawner. The final structure is the Underground Temple, which is quite big with a complex layout, and it can be found below the surface. It has quite a few chests, as well as rooms which look like libraries. Hopefully some more structures are added to this mod soon. Brass Armory adds lots of new craftable weapons, which fit under some different themes. With it installed, you'll be able to craft different boomerangs, flails, daggers, spears, halberds, maces, and more. They aren't overpowered at all, as most items at their highest tier deal 9 damage, which is just one point above a regular netherite sword. There's new arrows too, like frost, warp, laser, and fire arrows, and the developer plans to implement some more weapons soon, as the mod is still relatively new. Now a word from our sponsor Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they allow you to create your own website with ease and minimal effort on your part. Maybe you're wanting to create something like a Minecraft server and have a central location where you can inform your players with the latest updates or even collect donations for server maintenance. Those who do donate can then be given access to members-only areas and access exclusive content. Or you can just create a community-styled website which is only accessible to your friends. All of these features are really easy to implement, and that's just one of the many use cases. Squarespace offers tons of free templates to choose from, listed under multiple categories, which can all be edited to your liking with just a few clicks. So remember to check out squarespace.com forward slash power down for a free trial, as well as 10% off your first purchase when buying a website or a domain. And thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to the mods. Rally Health adds a mechanic from the Bloodborne game. When a creature attacks, you'll lose health. You'll have a small amount of time to return a hit to them, which will restore your lost health. So there's some risk to the mechanic, but a lot of reward. The more weapons come with YDM's Spell Swords. It adds 9 different weapons which can be crafted by upgrading vanilla items inside a smithing table. A few of them apply different effects, like setting an enemy on fire, freezing, or poisoning them. Whereas the Wrath of Zeus can summon lightning strikes onto a hit target. And the double-edged sword deals a lot of damage, but it's at a cost of your own health. Riddle Chess is inspired by the game Betrayal and Krondor. With it installed, chests in your world will have a chance of being replaced by a riddle chest, with the chance being configurable. When interacting with these chests, a riddle will appear on the screen, and you'll have to spell out the correct word before it will open. It just adds an extra challenge to the game, which I really like. Pickable health orbs means that breaking blocks and killing mobs will cause them to have a chance of dropping health orbs when killed, which return a bit of HP. It's a system seen in RPG games like Diablo. The default chance is around 15%, but it can be configured. This is a newer version of the mod, and it also adds orbs, which give speed, levitation, jump boost, damage resistance, and more. You can choose which blocks and mobs drop which orbs, and the chances. The skiing mod adds new items which lets you traverse on snow, specifically skis, snowboards, and sleds. These can all be crafted or obtained from the ski merchant, who has a chance of spawning in villages. When using skis, you can place a ski stick in your main hand and offhand slots to increase your speed, and there's some different pullovers to keep you warm. The snow shovel can be used to break a 3x3 area of snow at once too, so you can build your own courses. This mod has been ported from Fabric and allows you to open up enchanted books. You can read them, so you can read about the lore of each enchantment or curse, but it also shows the maximum level of an enchantment, what it does, and what it can be applied to. Medieval Entity adds some new hostile creatures to your world, who are different variations of knights. They spawn naturally, and have different styles depending on the biome they spawn in. A knight can spawn in swamps, deserts, hills, and forests, and can drop items like chainmail armor pieces. The first change with this mod comes to bows, 
which now have been given different tiers so that they match swords. They'll have different draw speeds and some even have built-in enchantments, as a golden bow has infinity and the netherite bow has flame. You can craft a quiver from 8 leather and when it's in your offhand slot, it has a 50% chance of not using an arrow. Villager arrows can be crafted from two sticks, making them cheaper, but they deal less damage, whereas barbed arrows are more expensive and deal more damage. The Witch's Cauldron can be crafted from seven logs, a cauldron, and a chain. It'll need to be placed above a sole campfire to be functional, and works like a brewing stand. You can add ingredients to it like you would a brewing stand, and it will save you a lot of blaze powder in the long run, as it's fueled by the sole campfire. Loot bags have a 4% chance of being dropped by monsters in your world, but you can change that value if you'd like. When you right-click, they'll open and loot will be added to your inventory. These follow lots of different loot tables, like shipwrecks, buried treasures, dungeons, jungle temples, and more. One other item that can be obtained from these bags is the Ice Wand, which can summon ice blocks. With Snowman C, you can create your own snowman who will fight for you, and you'll need to craft the snowman builder to start. It needs to be placed in a cold biome, otherwise the block won't work. Inside, you should place three snow blocks, coal, a carrot, a helmet, and a weapon. The type of helmet doesn't matter, and it accepts weapons like snowballs, a sword, or eggs. You need to throw eight snowballs at the builder block to complete the process, and then you can place down your snowman in your world. They don't follow you, but they do attack nearby hostile mobs, and you can pick them up again at any time. That's the end of our mod list. I do have some more mod videos coming very soon, so stick around for those, and if you like the content I'm putting out, then consider subscribing too.